Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and welcome to week one of the WBE. I'm the coach of the Melbourne Rotoms, and to kick off the brand new season, we're going up against Steph of Anime, the coach of the Golden State Glaceons. Now, if you don't know what the WBE is, it is one of the premier draft leagues on YouTube. A draft league in Pokemon is basically a league in which every player in the league drafts out of a pool of Pokemon, and you're restricted to using those Pokemon for the entire league. So as you can see, everyone's ended up with around 12 Pokemon or so, and for the remainder of the league, you can make some small adjustments or trades, but for the most part, you have to stick to the 12 Pokemon you drafted. So it's really interesting because team building becomes a lot more restrictive, and you know what your opponent's bringing every week for the most part, so you can prepare, and it makes, I think, uh, yeah, the team building component very very interesting so i've been in the wbe for singles in the past couple of seasons but a drive actually split it into singles and vgc this season so i joined the vgc league just because i've never played in a vgc draft league and i thought this would be a really really cool time to join uh, especially because there's so many brand new pokemon uh, and just in general i think it would be an exciting opportunity uh, to kind of get my feet wet with doubles draft league just because you know i've been playing singles and while i do feel like i've gotten a, the hang of singles a little bit better and i want to continue to improve in that regard I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to try out, you know, my skill in a doubles draft league. So really excited to be a part of it. There are 16 teams total in the VGC's portion of it, and 10 of those are, uh, there's 10 weeks of uh, regular season. Uh, eight of those teams end up making the playoffs, and then it's a single elimination bracket. So for the next 10 weekends, or including this weekend, uh, there will be a WBE match every Sunday, uh, as long as, you know, I'm able to actually battle my opponent, if not, it might be delayed a little bit, but on Sundays, you should typically expect a WBE match uh, for the next couple of weekends, which should be really, really exciting. So, you know, some new content to spice it up in addition to just the traditional VGC content that we do on this channel. So typically for these videos, what I'll first do is a team building component that'll last around 10 to 15 minutes, walking you through my, you know, thought process for what Pokemon I want to bring into the given matchup, uh, and then than the actual battle. So if you're only interested in the battle, feel free to check out the timestamp in the description below and just skip right to the battle. But uh, I, I do think the team building component is actually especially cool because it's VGC. So a lot of this knowledge I think is actually very relevant to how you might want to build an actual VGC team. So I hope you find this enjoyable and really excited to kick off the season. As always, if you guys do enjoy, uh, please share your support by leaving a like in the video. I'd really appreciate it. And hopefully you're as excited as I am to actually get into this league. Uh, I did not do a draft breakdown yet. Uh, that's just because I was pretty busy. Uh, uh, in the last couple of days and weeks so i uh, might do a delayed one after week one but i also there's some roster changes that i want to make because i actually wasn't super happy with my draft or the latter half of the draft i should say so um i'll see when i actually end up making those roster changes because you're only allowed to swap three pokemon throughout the entire season so you got to be really careful about what pokemon you want to bring um but that's enough about the wbe hopefully that catches you up if you don't know what this league is uh basically you'll be seeing me playing with the same pool of 12 pokemon every weekend uh, and i'm you know gonna walk you through which of those 12 uh, I'm actually going to be bringing into a given battle. So let's talk about the week one matchup. This is against Steph of Anime, like I mentioned, and I actually played Steph in a casual like streamer tournament last weekend. You might have caught it if you uh, follow me on Twitch. And she was a really, really great opponent. I think Steph's been playing VGC for a while, and you should never underestimate anyone in VGC, uh, especially because, you know, team building is such a critical, critical component. And to add, I think Steph is definitely a really, really strong doubles player. So, you know, going into this week, definitely do not want to underestimate her uh, at all. And I think her draft is actually really scary. When I played Steph this past weekend, she actually used a lot of the same Pokemon, Riolu, Snorlax, and Cinderace, to be specific. Uh, and it gave me a sense of, you know, what sets I might want to expect from her. So you can see my team on the left side, you see Steph's team on the right side. Uh, my team is pretty top focused, I would say. Like uh, it, I drafted, I think, a really, really solid core and like the top six Pokemon can pretty much come out every week if I wanted to. But I've got some flexibility, a Trick Room option with, you know, Duosian and Bronzor, uh, and then some ground immunes with Sigilyph and Unpheasant and Glaceon just for general support. However, going into this week, I felt like the top six Pokemon were just really good. I didn't feel especially strong about Trick Room, so I didn't really want to bring Duosion or Bronzor, mainly because she's got that Snorlax. And then I was like, I don't think Sigilyph, Glaceon, or Unpheasant actually really do very much, whereas uh, the core six are really important. Excadrill wants Giglet so that I can outspeed the Cinderace. Um, you know, I want Torkat for Intimidate because her team is very physically oriented. Uh, and then I think Primarina is just one of the best damage dealers around. And if you look at Steph's team, she actually doesn't really have great resist to Toxtricity outside of Claydol. So... Uh, from what I was expecting from her end, I thought definitely Snorlax, Cinderace, and Riolu are absolutely coming out into this matchup. And then for Pokemon that I think are going to come out, I think it's a combination of Corviknight, Jellicent, 
Clayda, Rebombi, and Tangela. Uh, the Rebombi is interesting, of course, because you could speed swap onto Snorlax. So if Snorlax belly drums, Rebombi can just give it, uh, you know, make it make it really fast. Uh, Clayda is actually a Pokemon I was really worried about, even though I think like it doesn't look like one of the stronger Pokemon on her team. Specifically into my team, I don't really have really great ground resists or immunes outside of kind of those lower tier Pokemon that I drafted. So I felt like Clayda could actually put in a lot of work into this matchup. So that was something I definitely wanted to prepare for. And then with Tangela, uh, you know, that actually supports both Cinderace and Snorlax as redirection and they can potentially set up either with belly drum or just with max moves so i wanted to be careful about that so like i mentioned uh you know the top six pokemon were the ones that i wanted to focus and i wanted to make sure i could just have ways to shut down any potential setup either from snorlax and cinderace i want to cover the Rebombi and tangela potentially supporting it of course riolu is going to come out and use coaching so that is something that i have to be careful of as well so let's actually talk about the team that i ended up bringing into this week um yeah, so let's, I'm just going to walk through each individual Pokemon and give you guys kind of the logic behind each of them. So the first one is Toracat. Uh, Toracat, of course, is just kind of general support, but it's especially important in this set because Steph's team is so physically oriented. I think two of the Pokemon that are going to often Dynamax are going to be the Snorlax and the Cinderace. And so uh, because, you know, Cinderace is often changing types through Libero, uh, I could potentially even burn that. So I think Will-O-Wisp was one of the main things I wanted to prioritize in this. And this is just general support. You know, fake out parting shot isn't really too surprising on a Toracat. Uh, and I have Overheat as the last attack, mainly because I didn't want Flare Blitz, uh, and Overheat, you know, does a little bit more damage to Corviknight. I believe with the special attack investment, I'm able to 2-hit KO Corviknight most of the time with Overheat. And as you'll notice for speed, uh, speed is actually pretty much the most important metric, I think, often to hit in Draft League. You always want to have some benchmark and outspeed, you know, most of your opponent's threats. So if you look at Steph's team, uh, the only thing that was really scary uh, I mean, like, Torcat's not outspeeding the faster Pokemon and Rebombi, Cinderace, uh, and those are the main two. Uh, so everything else is base 75 or lower. So I was like, okay, as long as I outspeed max speed like Claydol and Toxtricity, which I don't think will come out, but in the off chance it does, at least I have that benchmark to hit, then I'll be good. So uh, with this speed investment, I'm able to outspeed max speed Claydol, uh, and I can, you know, put the rest in bulk and special attack. So you don't need to always go for max speed because often there are times where you're, the extra speed investment just doesn't help you whatsoever. And in Draft League, it's even more relevant when you know exactly what 12 Pokemon your opponent can bring. So Torcat's pretty simple here. The idea is to just provide general support and try to shut down the physical attackers with Intimidate, uh, Fake Out, and Will-O-Wisp. Uh, Parting Shot, of course, good utility as well. Next Pokemon is Toxtricity. Toxtricity is really, really interesting, uh, especially going into this week. And you'll notice that I actually opted for a Choice Scarf variant, and I'll talk about that uh, why in just a little bit. But, uh, you know, this is a Pokemon that obviously could Gigantamax, but going into this week, I was actually not too sure if I actually want to max it or not, mainly because, uh, you know, I think there's definitely going to be an Assault Vest somewhere on Steph's team. Snorlax is the Pokemon I'm expecting it on, but you could see it on Cinderace as well. And generally with Assault Vest, both of those Pokemon can do a lot more damage in return to me, whereas, like, I don't really need the Paralysis or the poison uh, so that residual or that side effect of our g max attack actually isn't super valuable so i was like if i don't want to actually max toxicity how do i want to use it and what came to mind was a choice guard variant combined with whimsicott so uh, i'll go back to toxicity in just a bit but whimsicott this week i want to run an eject button variant and the reason for that is because steph has a lot of potential support especially with tangela with rage powder how I can get around that, though, is with Whimsicott, right? Whimsicott can uh, trade the Eject Button over to my opponent's Pokemon, even if the Whimsicott, or even if the Tangela goes for Rage Powder. So I can ignore the Rage Powder, uh, trick the Eject Button away, or switch through the Eject Button uh, to my opponent. And then with Choice Scarf Toxtricity, with this speed investment, I actually outspeed everything on Steph's team, even the Rebombi with max speed. Of course, Steph can outspeed the Toxtricity if she opts to Choice Scarf something, but I think a Choice Scarf is very unlikely to come out this week, especially because she knows I have Tailwind. So for that reason, I am pretty confident that going into this battle, my Toxtricity will outspeed everything on her team, uh, even without Tailwind support. So what now this allows me to do is just lead Whimsicott Toxtricity and potentially just go for a Switcheroo Overdrive turn one. Uh, and as I noted earlier, Steph's team does not have very many great electric resists at all, so that makes it even better because Overdrive is able to do a lot of damage. And even if she doesn't go for a max on turn one, I can, you know, just get a lot of free damage with Overdrive and force something out, especially because I think Riolu is going to be a very common lead. So if I waste a turn of Riolu going for coaching, steal the item away from the main sweeper and force it out, even if it doesn't max, that puts us in a pretty good spot. The rest of the moves are pretty self-explanatory. Sludge Bomb you obviously want, especially because there is the threat of Tangela going into this matchup. Volt Switch to allow me to switch out, and Overdrive does so much damage, I don't really need something like Thunderbolt anyway. Uh, and then finally, Snarl. Uh, the reason I opted for Snarl was because in the off chance Claydol does come out in this matchup, I could go for something like Fake Tears and Snarl, or even just go for uh, 
you know, Gigantamax with Toxtricity and just go for like Moonblast Max Darkness to KO the Clay Doll. So Snarl at least gives me some more flexibility. It means I'm not completely walled by Clay Doll. And because I'm a Choice Scarf variant, don't really need any other attacks. So uh, once again, speed is the most important focus. I opted for 180 Timid here so I could outspeed Rabombi with a Choice Scarf. Uh, it also obviously covers the Cinderace as well. Uh, max special attack and then the rest just in bulk so once again with all these pokemon when i approach team building speed is the first metric i want to hit i want to make sure i'm able to reach some benchmark that i'm aiming for and after that uh, typically we'll put the rest in you know bulk or uh, attack slash special attack investment Next Pokemon is Excadrill. This isn't super exciting. It's just pretty standard Focus Sash with Sand Rush. But as you'll notice, I'll call out Shadow Claw. And that's because Steph's team is Jellicent and Claydol. So I want to prepare for both of those. Those are pretty big threats in general. And I think uh, if I'm able to cover those, the matchup will be a lot easier. Uh, if not, then I'm kind of hard walled by the Claydol. I mean, I can Iron Head it, but Shadow Claw means I can even potentially max the Excadrill. Uh, max Phantasm into Jellicent or Claydol should definitely be a 2 at KO. It can combo also with, you know, Primarine or Gigalith for increased damage. So, um, um, yeah, nothing too special here. I was thinking about Sword Dance. I was thinking about a weakness policy set, but I was like, with Steph's team, there's so many things that hit Excadrill for super effective damage. Cinderace, uh, Snorlax, if it has Max Quake or Max Knuckle, one of the two it probably will have. Uh, Jellicent. So with all these threats, I don't think I'm really able to get a Sword Dance off, nor, I think, nor do I think weakness policy will actually be super good. So I opted just for a standard Focus Sash set because it's a Pokemon that I don't think will actually be maxing. Uh, so if I bring it out, at least I can just get two big attacks off before it faints. Uh, max attack. I opted for 164 Jolly, once again, similar benchmark to outspeed those base 75 Pokemon. You'll notice, though, that it, this is actually exactly one speed point faster than the Tora Cat. The main reason for that is because I don't want both of these Pokemon to be speed tying. I'd rather know for sure which Pokemon's going to be attacking first. So, uh, just by speed creeping myself, I know Excadrill will always go before the Tora Cat, and that way I don't have to play around a potential speed tie on my end. Uh, so, I can make more you know, safer plays that way. Uh, because I don't need max speed, the rest is dumped into HP. I could have even opted for like no speed on the Excadrill, but I was like, I can't see myself bringing it even without Gigalith and for that reason I want to at least outspeed the majority of Pokemon. I don't need max speed because uh, with Gigalith I'll be outspeeding everything on her end anyway so yeah. I've already alluded to the Whimsicott a little bit, but like I mentioned, I really wanted to use the Switcheroo set this week, especially because Steph's team is very revolved around her Dynamax Pokemon, in my opinion. If she does not get a max off, uh, or if I'm able to force the max off and she doesn't really get three turns off, I think it's going to be very difficult for her to win because so much of the team is, around, is revolved around, you know, getting a coaching off with Riolu and then just uh, getting really, really big knockouts turn after turn after turn. So I wanted to start with the Switcheroo. Uh, for the rest of the moves, pretty self-explanatory. Obviously want Tailwind. I was actually thinking of not running a single attack but i was like i think it's decently likely that stuff is going to have an assault vest on her team and if i switch a rue and take the assault vest and i don't have an attack whimsicott becomes absolutely useless so i was like i think moonblast is pretty much a must for that reason for the last attack there were so many options i was debating between i was thinking about charm encore taunt fake tears protect but for, I was like, I, I think like I kind of lack great damage output if I don't have fake tears. So with fake tears now, I'm able to just potentially fake tears and max toxicity or primarina and just pick up a lot of knockouts. I don't really need any speed investment in this set. Uh, and actually maybe one thing I should have done, as you'll notice, is that I am actually slower than Cloydol here. So I could have probably just speed creeped similar to Torkat and Exodrill made this like 142. But uh, I was like... If, if I'm going up against Clayton, I don't, I think Whimsicott's probably going to be tailwindy in a lot of those scenarios anyway. Um, and I'm probably going to have Primarina next to it. So I was like, I don't know if I actually really need to speed creep that. In retrospect, I think taking a little bit of investment away from HP and putting me in speed would have been a little bit better. But I was like, I don't expect this Whimsicott to be, uh, you know, I don't really think I need any speed investment into it. So I want to, wanted to go for Modest instead of like the Timids that you often see in VGC, because once again, there's nothing in that range that we actually really need out speed. And then the rest in HP just to be as bulky as possible. So I mean, I really prioritize Whimsicott in my draft in this league because I think it's a, such a good Pokemon. It's super flexible in doubles, especially in a draft league where there's, you know, like 10, 12 possible moves I can run any week. So, you know, a Jack one on a low, my opponent already have to respect, but there's so many different variants. I can just run a classic Focus Sash variant or so many different versions as well. So I wanted to try the Switcheroo option for the first week, mainly because Steph's team is very, very oriented around those Dynamax threats. Next Pokemon is Primarina. I opted for a Life Orb variant here, mainly because I thought I don't have great damage output up to this point. Toxtricity and Excadrill aren't really carrying the team in terms of damage output. Once again, if you look at Steph's team, she does not have great damage output or resists to Primarina. Sorry, she has great damage output, but uh, she does not have yeah, very many great resists to Primarina. Uh, and basically, a minus or, or after getting a Fake Tears off in max form, Primarina should be able to one-shot pretty much everything on her team. So I opted for a Hydro Cannon because, you know, that 
Barrage just does so much damage, uh, and you know, significantly more than Hyper Voice. Um, especially when you're max, it's a base 150 max move, which is really, really powerful. And I was like, I think I'm gonna actually max Primarina the majority of the time with this team. So wanted to bring that over. Uh, Moonblast is self-explanatory, protect is self-explanatory. For the last attack, I was debating between Energy Ball, Parasong, and Hyper Voice. Hyper Voice meant that I could bring the Primarina more often without maxing it, but I was like, I think this will probably be my max bomb most of the time. Uh, and Parasong basically creates another late game win condition where if I'm going up against Snorlax or Corviknight or Jellicent in the late game and I don't have great damage output, well, if I pick up two quick knockouts, I can just click that Parasong button and end the game immediately. So that's why I opted for that. I was debating between Torrent, obviously, and the other ability, but I was like, if I'm not running Hyper Voice, there's no reason not to run Torrent. Also creates a win con where if I take a bunch of damage, for example, from Cinderace, like a Helping Hand, I don't know, Max Steel Spike, uh, I can survive and then go for a uh, Max Geyser in return and do a ton of damage. So uh, the speed investment allows me to outspeed Cinderace under Tailwind. I think that's the most important metric to hit. Max special attack, and then once again, the rest just in bulk. So uh, once again, speed is the name of the game. You just want to make sure that you're able to outspeed, you know, the biggest threats either, uh, depending on the speed control that you have. So pre-Marina going into this week, I think I'm going to heavily prioritize because I think it's a fantastic Dynamax Mon against Steph's entire team. For the last Pokemon, we've got Gigalith. This is a fun set, and going into this week, I honestly had no idea what Gigalith set to run. I was thinking oh, I could go with Weakness Policy, but I was like, what does Weakness Policy even really accomplish, right? It doesn't do much damage, and Steph's team is very, very physically oriented. So I was like, why don't I actually just go for like a super bulky Gigalith with Key Berry and Iron Defense? I actually speed crept uh, the Snorlax as well. So with 60 speed EVs, I'm actually able to outspeed Snorlax if it has, you know, uh, no speed investment or even a little bit of speed investment. So the idea behind this Gigalith is if she prioritizes like Riolu Snorlax and it's an Assault Vest Snorlax, I could potentially just leave Gigalith, go for a Iron Defense on turn one before the Snorlax is able to attack me. Uh, and then even then a Max Quake does less than 50%. I get the Key Berry boost and then the subsequent turn I can survive another Max Quake. And then Body Press actually does a ton of damage into Gigantamax Snorlax. So yeah, I was like, I could run Weakness Policy, but I don't really see any reason to. With Snorlax being one of the larger threats, I think this is a Pokemon that I'm not going to max. I'm mainly going to be bringing Gigalith potentially to set up the Sand. And once again, if she prioritizes that Snorlax, which I think she will because uh, Cinderace is pretty bad into my team, then yeah, this is a pretty nice counter into the Snorlax. Uh, so Iron Defense and Body Press are self-explanatory. Uh, and then Stone Edge, I felt like I needed to have so I could have a way to hit the Jellicent. The last attack was actually Gravity, which is an interesting call out. The reason I wanted to run Gravity going into this week was because uh, the Corviknight was still pretty scary. Sure, you know, I have super effective attacks with Toracat and Toxtricity, but I was like, in the off chance Toracat or the Corviknight maxes and then I lose the Toxtricity or Toracat, I'm kind of walled uh, by like Extra Drone Gigalith are completely useless against it. So by adding Gravity, at least I can, you know, still damage the Corviknight using a ground type attacks. And I was like, I don't think Gigalith is ever really going to be protecting it. I bring it on in this matchup. So yeah, uh, EV spreads once again, max defense, obviously just to increase that damage output uh, and be bulkier of body press. Uh, speed, like I said, I wanted to run so I could actually outspeed Snorlax if it's not running any speed investment, which going into this week, I didn't think Steph had any reason to put speed on the Snorlax. Uh, and then the last one is just dumping the rest into HP. So yeah, uh, you know, I didn't think, or I don't think uh, Gigalith is really going to be coming out in this week very much, but uh, I was like, this at least gives me another option, right? Because this is a best of three league as well. So uh, if I lose game one, I can at least bring some mix-ups. And I think having surprise sets like this always have a lot of value in a draft league specifically. So yeah, that is the breakdown of the team. Hopefully you found it insightful. And yeah, let's get ready for the battle. So thanks for watching, guys. And uh, yeah, it's time to battle. Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and welcome to week one of the WBE. Of course, I am the coach of the Melbourne Rotoms, and to kick off the season, we are going up against Steph of Anime, who is the coach of the Golden State Glaceons. If you guys don't know what the WBE is, it is a draft league, and this is the actual first VGC draft league that I've been in and I've really seen on YouTube. So I am really excited to be a part of this league. Uh, you know, I've played in the singles version of this uh, for a while now. Uh, now we're moving back to kind of my comfort zone in VGC and doubles, just as I was trying to get a hang of singles uh, after making playoffs last season. But I think this is going to be really exciting, uh, and I'm eager to, yeah, just, you know, feature some really, really high level and cool battles in this draft league in the upcoming weeks. So, uh, I'm really eager for the first week as well um, because, yeah, I think, like, I haven't really tried out this team at all, uh, obviously, and so even if, you know, uh, I, I think this will just be great to get some experience with the team uh, and get a feel of, you know, what I like and what I don't like about it. So, uh, Steph has brought almost everything I was expecting, although I will say I actually thought Claydol was going to make an appearance over Kangaskhan, so I guess I'm glad uh, it doesn't. 
So there's no electric resists, and I'm running Choice Scarf Toxtricity, which I think is excellent here. Um, I have a lot of tricks with this team. I have Eject Button on the Whimsicott, Choice Scarf Toxtricity, uh, Eject Button Switcheroo. Uh, I had Shadow Claw on Excadrill to cover for Claydo, but that didn't end up being relevant. I have uh, Gravity on Gigalit so that I can hit the Corviknight uh, with Excadrill in the late game, and then Perish Song Pre Marina to potentially close out the game. The mode I was thinking of going with in the first game was leading Torcat Whimsicott. That gets me a quick Intimidate immediately, and I can also potentially Trick. Uh, the alternative is just to go with Whimsicott and Toxtricity. I don't think I want to go with Sand in the first game. Yeah. Kangaskhan is actually what I'm worried about. I wasn't really factoring that in, and because my Torcat is in max speed, it will have a faster fake out. So like, I could see like Kangaskhan and Cinderace coming out as a lead. Uh, I'm gonna lead Whimsicott, Toxtricity with Pre-Marina in the back, and I, I think Toracat just for the Intimidate switch in. I like that. Okay, so I think the idea behind this game is to probably max Toxtricity, or sorry, uh, max Pre-Marina, but we could max Toxtricity as well depending on the situation. Uh, I have Fake Tears on the Whimsicott, so by bringing two special attackers that'll do a lot. Uh, the main reason I really prioritized Eject Button in this matchup is because I think Snorlax and Cinderace are both very scary Pokemon that can max, so I want to get those out of the field. It's actually real Liu Kang is gone, okay. I'm gonna just probably switch out then, uh, switch the Whimsicott out, and probably just overdrive turn one. So, nah, let's get into it. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the WBE, please share your support by leaving a like in the video, would really appreciate it, and hope you guys are excited to kick off the season, because I, I definitely am. Um, yeah, I like going into Toracat turn one, I don't want to lose my eject button immediately, uh, and I think overdriving here is fine. I could also Volt Switch if I'm worried about Kangaskhan just doing a lot of damage to me. Um, I do want to double check Kangaskhan real quick, actually. Because I have to say, I was not expecting this as a lead. I'm okay with it, I think, for now. But... It does get Ground-type attacks. So, like, Volt Switch might be better? I don't mind Volt Switching here, I think. Just to play it safe. In the off chance, Kangaskhan does have a Ground-type attack. And I want to conserve my, um, I, I want to conserve the eject button stuff. Yeah. Just in the off chance, like, Kangaskhan maxes. I actually forgot about inner focus, so good to confirm that it has a day. Yeah, it's actually Kangaskhan max turn one. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Huh. I absolutely did not expect that. I could have just gone for like trip overdrive turn one, but I think I think fake out was like relatively likely there. Inner focus actually is kind of a problem for us here. Kind of forgot about that. So should we coaching? Oh, it's actually fake. Okay, so yeah, trying to just snipe the whimsicott immediately, which I think makes a lot of sense. Okay, so we get bolt switch off. Uh. I don't mind just going for the switcheroo the subsequent turn. Although, actually, there's a chance Toxtricity gets targeted in this slot. Although, I think if you're going for Faint, you're doubling up onto the Whimsicott. Just kind of risky to go out into Whim immediately here, in the off chance she did target that slot. With, like, a Max Quake. But I think I'm going to go switch into it. And then what I can do is trick the switcheroo, or sorry, uh, give the Eject Button over to Kangaskhan, and then Overdrive. Yeah, there's Max Quake. Did go into Whimsicott, so the one thing I was worried about did end up materializing. Okay. We'll give that a special defense boost as well. So I could have just gone for Switcheroo Overdrive turn 1, but... Was worried about a Fake Out forcing me out, and I actually forgot about Inner Focus, which was kind of silly. But at least I didn't stay in with Toxtricity and just faint. Um, so now I can go into Pre-Marina. So it's kind of scary though, honestly. I, of course, I can go for a fake out onto the Riolu right now. I have Will-O-Wisp as well, right? Which is pretty valuable here. But the Kangaskhan honestly probably outspeeds Torracat. So I'm worried about just like coaching and then Max Quake. So I think I want to go back out into Whimsicott. She might read this though and go for like a Max Strike. Hmm. I'm pretty sure it's Assault Vest on the Kangaskhan. Could just coaching max strike, but that wouldn't KO if I go for fake out. I mean, I could also just fake out Starfall into Riolu. I 
I think Riolu probably protects here, though, so I don't know if this is actually a great play. Oh, I timed out. <laughs> okay, Riolu went for Helping Hand. Very nice. Uh, that's a really bad timeout. But we're getting a lot of good information right now, so I don't mind that. Um, yep, Max Quake. Okay, into Re uh, Torcat. That's fine. However, I think the Moonblast did end up going into the Kangaskhan slot, which is kind of a problem. Nice helping hand. Oh no, it locked into Hydro Cannon. <laughs> well, at least it targeted Riolu. Oh, that is so bad for us. That's a very bad timeout. Okay, no worries, no worries. We'll get around it. Um, I'm gonna bring out Whimsicott, I think. Yeah, honestly, I got completely thrown off uh, with this lead. I'm gonna guess Kangaskhan doesn't even have Fake Out, because I think it's Assault Pass. Snorlax comes out, okay. So I could steal Kangaskhan's item right now. You probably max Strike into Whimsicott. I could also fake tears. Or uh, I actually might need a tailwind so that pre-marine outspeeds. Ah, uh, that <laughs> that was such a bad uh, timeout. But it wouldn't be a wouldn't be a Cybershell video without a timeout, so that's okay. Uh, yeah, I, I mean great prep by her. I just totally did not see real Luke Kangaskhan coming out here. We had good answers to it as well, so it's not like I came underprepared. Uh, my Gigalith could put in a lot of work going into the next game. So Riolu has Faint, um, and I'm sure Coaching and Helping Hand. The question is if the last one is Protect. Kangaskhan's only gone for Quakes. I'm Tailwinding to let the Primarine outspeeds the Kangaskhan the subsequent turn. Yeah, there's Max Strike. Oh, what's got survives that though? Okay, I wonder if she doubled up into it, because if not, this could be huge. Because now I can just fake tears Max Geyser. It's Curse Slacks. Okay, that's huge. That is very, very good. Um, so, honestly, this is still totally winnable even after that timeout. Okay. I honestly want to fake tears the Snorlax and target it down here. I don't think Kangaskhan's that big of a... Uh, I, I guess Kangaskhan will be at plus two. Spadef, it has Assault Vest. But I think Pre-Marina can take care of it in the late game, so... Yeah, I, I want to just snipe Snorlax immediately right now. I'm going to fake tears Max Kaiser it. Tricky timeout to start off the game. Uh, good to confirm it's Curse Slacks, actually, because I, the, a big question I had coming into this is who has the Assault Vest, and I'm, I think the answer is clearly Kangaskhan. So, uh, yeah, with Wim Whimsicott, I actually have no speed investment this week. It's max HP, max special attack, so the bulk actually really helps us there, because if I don't get a fake tiers off here, it's really bad, so I'm very fortunate that Curse ended up coming out. Okay, there's fake tiers. This probably would have been like an insta win if I just went for the uh nice and soccer punch comes out. Oh, that's so good. That is so good. Okay. So quake, soccer punch, normal type attack. Perfect. This is why conserving max is just so important in competitive Pokemon. So now I've set up the rain as well, so I can just fake tier the Kangaskhan, and I think Oh, but that's I have Life Orb and Rain up, but I don't know if it's a KO on a Kangaskhan. Okay. Honestly, like, haven't had a serious battle like this in a while. The nerves definitely... I feel it a little bit. <laughs> Cinderace comes out. Okay. Uh, I was EV to outspeed Cinderace at neutral, but because I'm at minus one, I won't outspeed, unfortunately. She could bounce here. I think just fake tears the Kangaskhan and Geyser here is fine. Because I think Toxtricity should win 1v1 against the Cinderace. And Cinderace protects, perfect. Perfect, okay, good to confirm that as well, so it's not like choice. So Cinderace has protect. 
Yeah, the reason I'm targeting Snorlax here is because I think it's Assault Vest, uh, and Cinderace isn't as much of a threat to me, honestly. Because uh, Primarina is honestly one of the best walls against it. Yeah, so that's Double Edge. I don't think it has um, Fake Out, if I had to guess. But we should just win now, because we have one more turn of max. Tuxture so he just comes out, and we can just Overdrive now. Is that a KO? Nice. Good job, Primarina. I wasn't too sure who I wanted to Dynamax or prioritize Dynamaxing in this matchup because I liked the idea of maxing Toxtricity. The Choice Scarf Toxtricity was specifically for Cinderace though. Uh, Tangela was something I was considering in this matchup, so like one way I could get around Tangela plus Snorlax or Tangela plus Cinderace is just trick uh, or switch a Roo and Overdrive turn 1. So yeah, I'm just going to Overdrive here and Geyser. Okay, so end up with a W, but I, I think that's why I really had to be a little bit aware of the potential of... And there's Iron Head. So, more information on Cinderace's attacks is valuable as well. If it's going for an Iron Head there, I was thinking she might have teched in, like, an Electric-type attack, and it has the Life Orb as well, so I get to confirm that. So, tons of great information coming out in Game 1. I could totally see um, Jalousin come out in Game 2 for her. So, also, if you don't know, uh, WBE, when it was singles, was just best of one, but since it's a VGC League, we're actually playing best of three. So even though I won the first game, we have not won for the week yet. But a lot of good information there. I'm almost confident Kangaskhan has the Assault Vest. I don't think it has Fake Out, honestly. Mm. Yeah. But hard to say for sure. I've also revealed the Trick. Or sorry, I keep calling it Trick. I've revealed the Switch Root Tech, but it's really good for us still. Because if I can, like, I, I think the bulk of, um, like, the majority of the strength that comes from Steph's team is mainly from her having uh, a really strong Maxmon, especially with Assault Vest, next to Coaching. So I thought that was going to be Snorlax. It ends up being Kangaskhan, which I think is actually less scary to see because of, you saw how we approached this. Uh, I also totally forgot about Inner Focus, so I am very glad to now get that insight because the Lidden was uh, entirely useless for us. So we wanted to keep that in mind. Or Tora Cat. <laughs> Just jumbling all the words right now. Uh, but really cool prep on her end. Uh, Kangaskhan Riolu was not what I was expecting at all. Um, I was fully expecting just like Snorlax Riolu. And fun fact actually, so I played Steph uh, in a fun like um, exhibition tournament over the last weekend. And it was like traditional VGC. And she played really, really well. Like I think uh, this league has a lot of like newer players that like VGC people might not recognize. But I think... You can't underestimate anyone in this league, and there are just so many incredible players, so, yeah. Uh, I don't know, Wim Tox is still fine, I think. I'm really glad Claydol is in here, because I think now, if you're her, you might consider bringing the Jellison and prioritizing that more. But she might be aware now and not max turn one. I just think Torcat is pretty bad for us. Part of me wants to try out my Keyberry Gigalit. Can that come out here? It's actually not bad. I want to see how she adjusts to what I brought in game one, and I also don't think I bring the exact same Pokemon. Actually, I shouldn't say that, because Torcat's still potentially valuable here. Um... Okay, I'm going to go Wim Toxtricity again. Pre-Marina is, is a must bring, I think. Shadow Claw Excadrill actually kind of helps against the uh, Jellicent here, which is interesting. See, like, Torcot still holds value just for fake out pressure and will o wisp and an intimidate into Cinderace, which might be her max mon. I might still just go with it. She hasn't given me much reason to think otherwise. I don't know. This could have been a cool game for Excadrill Gigalith, I think. Um, so I'm running Iron Defense, and my, my Gigalith actually has some speed to outspeed Snorlax with a little bit of speed investment, which is kind of like a cool tech for this matchup. I don't know if that'll be relevant, um, but given that it's Curse Last, I'm thinking it's not going to really be speedy because she's prioritizing these drops. Okay, we all do Snorlax. I'm okay with that. She has no way around me going for a uh, trick, or sorry, switcheroo onto Snorlax turn one and overdrive. She's, I don't think she maxes here though, so the question is whether I want to actually like not like conserve my switcheroo turn one. But this is just so much free damage immediately that I think it's valuable. Yeah, so I'm just gonna switcheroo and overdrive. 
Um, I think that's fine. Actually, the only way this doesn't work is if faint is... I actually don't remember the priority of it. Oh, it's plus two. Wait, that's actually really bad. Uh, for some reason, I thought it was plus one. So that means it'll go before my, I get the eject button off. So that was actually a really cool play on her end last... Yeah, she could just max here and just faint me. I should have thought about that. Uh, I could have just gotten a... Actually, faint is a really good counter to my eject stuff. Very cool. Okay, this game will be a lot harder than the last. Yeah, I thought Fate was plus one priority. I, I definitely should have done a little bit more. Oh, wait, she... I get it! Oh, that's so good. She not go for Faint? Oh, yeah, she was probably predicting me to switch out again. Because that's what I did in the last game. But... <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yeah, nice. We get lefties on Whimsicott too. So, I actually kind of messed up there, because I... <laughs> it's an example of where me actually playing a little worse ends up benefiting me, because she was just making a full-on read of me switching out the Whimsicott like I did last time around. Um, the Faint is a really cool attack, that's why she went for her last game, but now I think actually I'm just clear to just overdrive and fake tears everything. Uh, I definitely need to do a little bit more prep going into these games, I think. Uh, like, I think the team I brought was really, really good for this week, uh, I think, but I, I need to just reinforce my mechanics. Uh, on certain things, like not messing up the faint interaction there is really silly, but it actually helped us in this game. So definitely not the cleanest play, but it is the first week of the WB. I, I'm not gonna lie, I honestly felt a, uh, like some nerves going into this, mainly just because uh, I, I think like Steph and I had a really, really close best of three over the last weekend. Uh, and I think like Riolu just in general is really scary with coaching stuff, but now we're in a tremendous position, I think, especially because she didn't end up bringing Claydol, which I thought was the one thing that actually checks the toxicity. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so that's Copycat. But it goes in a Whimsicott. So it's not a... Um, is it? Oh, it is. Okay, interesting. Let's see if it can survive this. I, I probably can because I'm timid. Okay, so like Trick Room might go up now. Well, Calm Berry, very cool. She doesn't have a max to play with though, which is such a big advantage, right? Because like we were able to win that last game just having uh, by having a good late game max. But I think the Snorlax probably comes out right now. Yeah. Okay, so I've got Lidden. I keep calling it Lidden. Tora Cat. Uh, and Pre-Marina. I mean, Pre-Marina is very good here. I think Pre-Marina wins this, actually. If we get another KO, actually, we just win with Parish Song, right? You probably Ground-type attack into the Toxtricity. I don't mind switching out the Torah Cat here. And going for fake tears onto Snorlax. Given that she's Curse Lax, I doubt she has Protect, so then I can just fake out Max Geyser at the next turn, I think. Yeah. Uh, turn 1 was so scary, though. If she just went for the Faint again, I could have been screwed. That's why, that's why she went for it in game 1 as well. Like, she definitely was expecting the eject button stuff this game, so well done on her end. But the fake tears is putting in work right now. Yep, there's high horsepower. That's fine. Ah, look at that. What a beast. And strength's up. Okay. I don't really care about Jellicent healing. That's not really too much of a concern, I think. Um, I don't think Pre-Marina is in immediate danger of taking damage from Jellicent. So I think fake out into Snorlax here and just switch out into Pre-Marina is fine. Because then I can just max the Pre-Marina and Geyser the Snorlax in the subsequent turn. She could switch the Snorlax out, but uh, at this point, the only thing that lets us switch it into Max Geyser is the Jellicent. But I I'm still thinking about that turn 1 play. Like, she was probably like, oh, he made a big brain play, but I, I didn't. <laughs> I was just dumb and <laughs> forgot that Fate was higher priority than uh, Prankster. I thought it was plus 1 as well. Good to reinforce these mechanics right now, though. Okay, nice flinch. Another strength up. Yeah, that's fine. Like, Jellicent healing up isn't really a problem, because I have answers against that. It's already at minus two spidef as well, so... I can KO either of these Pokemon right now, so... I think right now I'm free to just launch a Geyser into the Snorlax. Um, and... Uh, I actually don't mind sacking the Torcat here. Because I'm guessing our last one's gonna be Corviknight, but Pre-Marina closes out against Corviknight as well. There's only two turns of Trick Room left. 
I could conserve it for will o -Wisp. Ah, I don't see much reason actually to not switch out into Whimsicott here. Max and just Geyser. So I actually was originally thinking about like uh, Hyper Voice Pre Marina with Life Orb, but then I thought about the matchup and I was like, I think Max Pre Marina is really good here. And I thought Parish Song would be a potential good late game win condition against Bulky Snorlax and Corviknight, which is why I have it. So I was debating between Hyper Voice with uh, Liquid Voice or Torrent. And I made the last minute switch to Torrent uh, with Hydro Cannon. I don't think it'll actually make too much of a difference in the course of this matchup, but yeah. Uh, I think the biggest thing in that ended up coming out here is the lack of. Uh, the lack of clay doll which i was actually most worried about so uh steph's team had clay doll i also had robombi so i actually uh ev the toxtricity to outspeed max speed robombi with the choice scarf so that she couldn't go for like uh belly drum uh, speed swap stuff um so i pre prepped for almost everything but kangaskhan was kind of a wild factor here okay so that's nice for curse nice so we should just ko once again with the geyser uh there's only one turn of trick room left uh, and we can potentially end the game with a Parasol at this point as well. Jellison's revealed Strength Zap and Trick Rooms. Let me just note that real quick. And Scald. Okay, nice. Scald. Uh, that was a messy turn one, though. I never I never like it when uh, turn one is, like, as, as uh, you know, risky as that was. Because uh, if I don't call that, like... If she just went for the faint and the max quake on a toxtricity, we lose so much on turn one. I think it's still like definitely winnable, kind of like the last game where we fell behind early. But it's it's just a lot tougher because I, I do think Pre Marina just cleanly sweeps her entire team once max ends uh, because she doesn't have any resist to it. And Geyser plus Moonblast with fake tier support is just incredible here. Okay, so Cinderace is our last one. I believe there's one more turn of Trick Room. Yeah. Um. I mean, Primarina should clean this up at this point. We have Toxtricity in the back as well. This is at minus two special defense, so I am just going to go for a switcheroo onto Cinderace, get rid of the Life Orb, and just Starfall into Jalicent. I think Cinderace probably protects here, but Primarina should clean this one up. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't like how I played this set too much, to be honest. Uh, I think there's a lot of things to be critical of. Um, one... If I'm using, uh, you know, Eject Button Whimsicott, I should be a little bit more aware of the potential counters to it. And honestly, I thought the only counter to it would be Kangaskhan, which I wasn't even expecting, which is why I was so confident bringing into this set. Um, so she's going to protect the switcheroo, but that's fine. We should just cleanly knock out Jellison here. Oh, <laughs> very cool. Missed. I, uh, I'm going to be honest. I don't know the full effect of that. Huh, prevents your stats from being lowered by other Pokemon. That's sick. That's sick. I just actually checked Discord and Steph was like, I didn't think you'd actually do it. <laughs> I didn't think so either. <laughs> I, I was just dumb. She made the better play, honestly. Like, I, sh I probably should have played safe there. But uh, that's an example of a play where you can, like, go big or go home, where, like, I'm a game ahead. Like, uh, and you can get away with maybe playing a little risky there. But I, once again, I, I kind of get away from playing bad. <laughs> Let me message her back real quick. Uh, yeah. I <laughs> I'm telling her, and then I checked after I was putting in my moves and saw that it was at plus two, and I was like, I'm done for. <laughs> uh, I, I think um, if this went to a game three, I probably would have actually brought out the, um, the Gigalith, because... Gigalith is actually very good against the most of the stuff that she's bringing in. I don't think she would have prioritized leading Cinderace, which is like the one thing I was kind of worried about going up against. Okay, that was not a clean set in the sense that I made a lot of mistakes. Like, turn uh, in game one, I forgot about Inner Focus on the Kangaskhan, uh, <laughs> which is bad. And then I um, forgot about Faint being higher priority. And then in game two, yeah, I, I mean... It, end, it ended up working out, um, but yeah, she, she made a great play not going for it. Uh, I, I think, um, yeah. <laughs> Either way, though, okay, let's say let's say she did go for the Fane and the Max Quake. Um, what happens there? Uh, I get a free switch and into the... Um, into the Tora Cat, and then I probably bring Whimsicott back out. And then I probably go for Will-O-Wisp onto the Snorlax. 
Uh, yeah, I will wisp and then probably Moonblast into the real Lou. Um, so I think, like, the win column was still clear. It was basically a late-game free Marina sweep. So uh, even even in the worst case in which the, the faint stuff happens, I, I think it's actually definitely still winnable, especially because it's lefties on Snorlax as well, which I don't think is a super relevant item in this set. But it just would have been a lot scarier because um, Toxtricity is most likely fainting there. But I think, yeah, if we trade Toxtricity uh, and get a free switch in into Lydon and bring a Whimsicott back, subsequent turn, I can just go, for, like I said, for will respond to Snorlax, Moonblast into the... Um, into the Riolu, and as soon as I burn the Snorlax, that thing becomes a lot less useful, uh, especially because I get the Intimidate onto it as well. So it's not that doing enough damage to knock out either of my Pokemon. So then we still have the last turn of Max, keep uh, Whimsicott around for a little bit longer and just fake tears and sweep with the Pre Marina. So I think definitely wasn't like game over on turn one if if it didn't went my way, but my <laughs> my stupidity actually saved me there, which is hilarious. So uh, yeah, but I, I think, you know, like I said, this was the first week, so I didn't exactly know how things would play. I was actually a little nervous going into this honestly because i uh, you know i mean this is still like a casual league but i really really want to do well especially because i think this is vgc which is obviously my comfort zone relative to singles um and i'd like to make a deep run in the league so i think my team actually was really fire this week but my play not so much because uh i, I need to just look into all the possible options because honestly i wasn't even considering faint from the real loot like uh, especially because i played steph this past weekend and she had uh like a standard real loot with protect coaching um what else? They didn't have Faint, I don't think. Although, I don't know why I didn't think it would have Faint. Like, Faint is actually pretty common on Riolu. Uh, I just, for some reason, in my head thought it was plus one priority this entire time. So, good game to Steph. Uh, once again, you can check her link in the description below. Uh, honestly, yeah. <laughs> that was super funny. It makes me look better than I actually am. But, like I said, I, I think, like, even if turn one actually doesn't go amazing, uh, because I had the Will-O-Wisp on the Tauracat, I actually think this was still a very winnable matchup, because... Uh, I think the Pre-Marina just sweeps through everything, uh, and I have fake tier support, so all my damage is on the Pre-Marina, but I think it's still definitely winnable, just would have been a lot tougher, but those were tough games, honestly, I mean, both of them, like, I, I didn't, I think one thing that I struggled with into going into this week was coming up with a definitive lead slash game plan, uh, and I was like, you know what, I, as a VGC player, because it's best of three, I'd rather just learn the sets and then go from there, um, and so, like, I got caught off guard by the, the Kangaskhan lead, which was super, super small. I'm glad at least I Volt Switch turn one, uh, and not just sacrifice the Toxtricity immediately. Um, but yeah, need to remember, like, inner focus, and then, like, remember some of these, you know, specific moves that I expect to see from my opponent. So, uh, I think, uh, had the tools to win, but it could have looked a lot cleaner if I was a little bit more prepared in terms of expecting certain abilities and moves. And none of these were super crazy either, although I, I will say the Kangaskhan pick was very, very cool on her end. So, yeah. Uh, full credit to Steph. I think she came with a really awesome team. And, uh, yeah, it was awesome to play her. So, good luck to her in the rest of the league. You can find her linked in the description below once again. <laughs> and, uh, kind of boneheaded play by me in turn one of uh, game two, but we take those. So, that's gonna be it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching, as always. If you enjoyed, uh, leave a like, and I'll see you guys soon. Alright, peace.